I wanted to give you an update today about an upcoming publication that I think importantly uh, considers, discusses and provides a framework for understanding central nervous system changes that occur in the perioperative environment. When I say the perioperative framework, what I mean is central nervous system disorders associated with factors related to the admission to hospital for surgery, with the conduct of surgery and anaesthesia, with discharge from the surgical environment, and then with discharge from hospital. So the publication is titled, Recommendations for the Nomenclature of Cognitive Change Associated with Anaesthesia and Surgery 2018. And this is a publication that reflects a lot of work that's been conducted by a consensus group, the nomenclature consensus group that had been assembled to review the evidence uh, and to seek to understand and develop a, a, a common framework for both discussing, uh, defining uh, and characterising uh, the changes that occur in cognition through the perioperative space. The importance of this nomenclature statement is that it reflects the opinions, the expertise and the experience of researchers and clinicians that come from a diverse set of areas of medicine, all of which have been involved either directly or indirectly in seeking to manage or understand the way in which brains change as a consequence of anaesthesia and surgery. For example, anesthesiologists, surgeons, uh, gerontologists, neuropsychologists uh, and general physicians all in their own practices uh, have had to deal with issues uh, uh, associated with questions around the extent to which new central nervous system changes may have been related uh, to the uh, conduct of surgery or anaesthesia. The first author on the publication is Everett, Liz Everett from St Vincent's Hospital in Melbourne, Australia. And she and a group of experts then assembled a larger number of panels where they had multiple discussions across multiple uh, time points to both generate and refine the nomenclature. And I commend uh, you to take a look at the publications uh, uh, to actually consider in detail what's written there. The nomenclature group recognises that the greatest risk factor for adverse central nervous system outcomes associated with anaesthesia and surgery is age. We've known for many years that surgery and anaesthesia may cause some changes uh, in the way in which people think and behave. Almost from the dawn of the use of anaesthesia itself, has it been uh, recognised that delirium, uh, personality changes, cognitive changes may occur after surgery. And we all have seen people who come to our clinics where the history often includes uh, stories or statements that my mother was not the same after she had surgery or things were going well until she had her operation or, st or stories like this. Uh, and uh, we have been for many years trying to get to the bottom of, of how that circumstance occurs. So numbers of lines of research have given rise to the necessity and acceptance for this nomenclature and that is for many years we thought heart surgery itself was associated with an adverse cognitive consequence. That is as a consequence of some aspect of cardiac arterial bypass grafting was there a central nervous system effect? Maybe as a consequence of being managed with respiratory support, maybe because of the high dose of opiate anaesthetics that are necessary, to, uh, are necessary for the conduct of open heart surgery, or processes associated with pre-morbid factors such as hypertension or even dementia that, that, that could be exacerbated by this surgery. But we then started to quickly appreciate that these adverse outcomes, people leaving surgery uh, with, some cog with some abiding cognitive impairment, actually were occurring after surgery, elective surgeries for hip replace or knee replace. Uh, and even in some circumstances where investigations like angi angiograms uh, were conducted. And this has led the field to understand that it may not be specific types of surgery that increase risk of adverse CNS outcomes, but rather a nature of surgery or anaesthesia itself. Now the problem is that whilst we neuropsychologists or gerontologists or surgeons were all seeking to understand, to seeing this in our clinical practices, we didn't really have a framework for discussing with one another uh, in a way that we could understand a common language to talk about the nature and the magnitude of these disorders. And there, consequently, we couldn't ask about 
pre uh, prevalence or um, incidence of these disorders. And without that, it's difficult for us to understand about uh, risk factors or mitigating factors or protective factors. And so the crucial aspect of this uh, nomenclature statement and the fact that the nomenclature statement arises as a consequence of the input from multiple disciplines is we now have a common framework for discussing with one another the nature, magnitude, risk factors, outcomes that are associated with anaesthesia and surgery. And so whilst we do know a lot about this, uh, it provides for us a really stable framework to now challenge hypotheses that we all have um, for us to start to uh, identify those tools or those procedures or the time points at which we can best understand these adverse outcomes and even then start to consider what therapeutic or what practical interventions might operate so that we could minimise, forestall or even improve or cure uh, any adverse outcomes that we, uh, that we see as a consequence of this surgical process. This provides a really exciting starting point uh, and uh, also to uh, makes available to a broad range of central nervous system specialists and indeed general specialists um, knowledge and information about this important aspect of healthcare, particularly at a time when the rates of older people both having elective uh, and emergency surgery is increasing dramatically. So at Cogstate we have been very pleased to be a part of this process. Uh, and to have contributed uh, to the nomenclature statement in our own commitment to working to understand and potentially advance therapies for central nervous system diseases or disorders or injuries that occur in older people. We realise that this is another important contributing factor and so we've worked with the greatest of urgency uh, to, to uh, understand and to refine our own processes so that they're optimal for conducting research in this space too.